Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's topic is can't finish what you start? Then watch this, or at least that's what the title of the thumbnail says. So, but it's really about not being able to follow through and finish what you start. So if you're someone who is watching this, chances are you are really good at starting projects. You get really excited, you get really worked up with things, but you seem to never be able to see them to their conclusion, to their full completion. At some point along the way, something happens, things get difficult, you get confused, you lose motivation, whatever the case may be, and whatever the goal or endeavor is, you just can't seem to see things all the way through to the exact T that you had laid out and the goal that you had said from the beginning. So I wanted to talk to you guys about why that is, why we do these things and how we can overcome it. So I uh, did write some notes out that kind of started flowing today, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. Sometimes we struggle to start something and that's a whole nother topic in and of itself because a lot of the times it's just hard for people to get started. But a lot of the times we struggle with following through and seeing things through to completion and this is more common and more difficult to do than it is just to get started right because it's easy to get started and say oh i'm gonna you know i always use fitness as an example right oh i want to lose 25 pounds you know and get in shape for the summer and all these things and so you start going to the gym you start eating healthy and you do that for a couple of weeks but you know life gets in the way or whatever and you stop so a lot of people, a lot of us, I mean, I'm no, I'm no exception, right? It's easy for us to get things started, but it's difficult and more challenging to see them through to completion. So why is that? Why does that happen so much? So both can be difficult, but it's usually finishing things that's more challenging. Why? Well, I think that when we start things initially, there's a couple reasons why it's always easy to get started and get some momentum going. One it's something new, right? You've been thinking about getting this thing started, uh, losing weight, starting a small business, whatever the case may be. So you come into it with a lot of enthusiasm. It's been on your mind for a while. So you're really excited. You have a game plan. You've prepared for it. You've really talked yourself up into this positive state of action. So much so to where the emotion, which is energy in motion, has got you worked up and excited to finally take action and get things started. So it's easier to get things started than it is to complete things because we have an initial enthusiasm, uh, a natural excitement of starting this new project or endeavor when we begin a new project or goal. So that's one reason. It's easier to get started than it is to finish because we have more enthusiasm in the beginning. Also, when you're initially starting something, again, taking workout for uh, workouts, for example, or getting in shape, when you start something, it's very easy to see some results fairly shortly, right? Because you haven't done anything yet. So basically anything that you do to get the ball rolling, you're going to see some progress, which is even more motivating. So you've got this initial enthusiasm, you get this project started and you see some progress or you know, uh, some success right away. And it kind of snowballs that initial enthusiasm and you get real worked up and you're like, yeah, yeah, we're doing this. Nice, it's going, let's go. Like, and, and so that enthusiasm snowballs and amplifies. And so it's even easier to kind of carry that forward uh, phase or segment of achieving your goal forward because you're just seeing some success. So it's great feedback right off the bat. So what happens? Why do we end up falling off? What happens along the way and why can't we see the goal through? Well, inevitably, there are going to be challenges and dips and that initial enthusiasm, one, will go away. So a month into working out, now the initial enthusiasm of going to the gym, now it's not like, yes, let's do this. Oh, I'm already losing weight, let's go. You're like, now you're actually tired because you know life's getting in the way, work, family, prior obligations, responsibilities, a tough day at work. Last thing you wanna do is go to the gym after work. So you're like, oh man, the initial enthusiasm gone. And even though I'm seeing results, like I'm tired. So the, now you're starting to fall off because the enthusiasm going away, you're not seeing as uh, 
quick of results as you want because your body is adapting and you're in a remodeling phase in your uh, with your body and of course you know this is just using fitness as an example but many other you know examples we could use so you started this small business you launched it you were super excited you got your logo made you know you got all this stuff going uh, you, you launched it you saw some small sales right away and you're like yeah cool like oh it's working so now we start to fall off because now a couple months into starting your small business you're not getting any any sales you're not getting many if any and you're like oh crap what's happening you know what, what happened to all the people that were buying in the very beginning so the initial enthusiasm the sales are dropping off and you're like oh crap so there are inevitable challenges and drop-offs, dips in your progress, um, and this is with anything. It's gonna happen, it's supposed to happen like that. And this is where a lot of people fall off. They stop, and I used to see this all the time in the gym. Um, you know, after the first four to six weeks, you know, the luster, uh, you know, the workouts aren't exciting, we're doing the same thing, but you need to do the same thing because you're getting stronger even though your progress uh, isn't reflective of what you're actually doing all the hard work you're putting in you feel like you're plateauing but no this is like the crucial remodeling phase and there's a lot of good things happening at this point but the process of transformation basically why we fall off is because it hasn't been completed you didn't see the process of transformation uh, all the way through it wasn't completed so when the initial enthusiasm wears off and the initial progress and success that you saw, that little burst of excitement wears off, now you're at a crossroads and you're faced in that fork in the road. Okay, do I give up? Do I keep going? And since you haven't seen that process of transformation complete all the way, we fall off at this point because we tend to fall back into our old ways. You start to eat the way you used to eat, little by little. You don't go to the gym five days a week, now you only go three. So little by little, you're self-sabotaging yourself. You're going back to your old ways because you haven't seen the full transformation yet, the full completion of you changing yet. So you go back in old habits, you go back into the old mindset, you go back into the old you, you never break through that barrier and you could have been so close to breaking through that barrier and seeing the next level of progress that's actually the long-term sustainable change and success that you seek, you were so close, but you went back into your old habits, so you fell off. And then what we do is we begin to justify our current circumstances or our old life or the way we have it to basically justify why it's okay to go back into the old way well I wasn't in that bad of shape to begin with I mean I didn't eat that bad you know my sleeping eh, it wasn't that but like my lifestyle wasn't that bad I was I guess I was okay with the way that I was so again you're at that crossroads many of us fall off and we don't see things through to completion because you fall into the old mindset the old habits that you had and now you begin to justify why those old habits weren't so bad. This is all forms of self-sabotage. So you never saw what you wanted to see through because you self-sabotaged yourself <laughs> uh, by justifying the old you. This is why you, you didn't see it through to completion. This is a form of self-sabotage. You're not growing. Uh, you grew a little bit or you didn't even really grow. You you started it and you started to grow, but when it got uncomfortable, when that initial motivation went away, when you didn't see the results as quickly as you wanted to, when the idea of what it would look like, this process of transformation didn't pan out in your mind the way you had envisioned initially, you've faced some hardship, you justified it, you've gone back into old thinking habits, old ways of being, uh, old ways of doing things and you self-sabotage yourself at this point. So what happens eventually, if you've done this over and over in your life like I have, with different areas of your life, you basically are programming your mind subconsciously to tell yourself that you're not capable of doing this. You lose belief and you lose confidence in yourself. So that every time that you start up a new project or a new endeavor, even though you believe on the surface that, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this, let's go, and you get that initial excitement, your subconscious mind 
because it has past experiences, your ego, to draw off of just saying, yeah, right, you're just gonna give up at the same point like you always do, you ain't gonna see this through, it's not gonna happen. And you start to doubt yourself and it's only because you've created this, these past experiences of self-sabotaging yourself and not seeing yourself to, or not seeing the goal that you had to completion. So you've developed this habit of self-sabotaging yourself, of starting things and not stopping and not seeing them through. So how do we break through? How do we get there? So how do we break through? Well, first and foremost, we do what we're doing right now. You become aware. Awareness is the key to change in everything because until you're aware and then responsible, you have no power and no agency to change what has been. So you have to identify. That's why we make these videos. We, we uh, expand our consciousness, our perspective to identify the cycle and understand what's going on. Once you identify and understand it, and you can be brutally honest with yourself and accept responsibility for that and be responsible for that, damn, this is what I've done every time. I've always done this thing. Now you can change it. But until then, until we identify, because you can't change what you're not aware of, right? So we have to become aware of it. And then you can't change what you don't accept responsibility for because it's like, oh, no, it was someone else or something. Well, if it's outside of you, you don't have any power to change it. So identify, be responsible for it. That's how we change it. That's how we break through. That's how we start to break through. You look at your goal for the long term. An old mentor of mine said that life happens in four year cycles. Think about like elementary school. My elementary school is like five years. Anyways, and then middle school. Middle school, I think it was only three, but then high school was four, college is four, master's degree is four, sometimes only two, three. Anyways, you get my drift. Uh, presidential terms are four years, right? So he said to look at your goals in four year cycles. And this really helped me reframe how I approach things now and kind of where I'm at and my journey and where I'm going. So approach things in the long term, not in the short term. Give yourself three to five years, at least four years for this thing, for you to completely transform your body, for you to start your business, for you to, um, you know, uh, develop new business partnerships and networking and business relationships or even uh, romantic partnerships, right? Give yourself years to get to know somebody, to go date them for a while before you really decide to commit and like move in with someone, right? Give things time, give them years. Don't give them months, not even just a year, not even just two years, give the years, four year cycles. That's how we break through. You see this in the long term, not in the short term. It's a process of transformation. It takes time to do these things, right? To instill new habits, to become a different person, especially if you've been stuck in your ways or been like this person, this version of you for so long, it's not gonna happen overnight. You may have, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, X plus whatever years of being this certain way. I mean, to give yourself four years to change into a different version of yourself doesn't seem that far off when you put it in perspective. Even if you're young and you're like 25, 21, 22, you've still been this certain way for 22, 23, 24 years. It's gonna take you at least a couple of years to transform into a new version of yourself. So if you start at 24, at 28, you're an amazing new version of yourself. It took four years, but you're still only 28 years old. But if, if you're longer and you've been 30, 40s, 50s, whatever it's been, I mean, you gotta give yourself some time to do this. So see it in the long term, not in the short term. Development, or you've got to develop commitment and understand that this is a cycle and process of transformation and develop discipline and commitment Commitment is seeing it through no matter what comes up, no matter what gets in your way, you still want it bad enough. And if you don't want it bad enough, then maybe it wasn't a real authentic goal or a powerful vision to start with. So we always talk about that. You start with the powerful vision first, but it develop, it's developing commitment and discipline in the long term, seeing it in a four year cycle minimum. This is also tied to your self worth and your self love. I had someone leave a comment the other day in which they realized, I talked about it, your ability to see and follow through with a goal that you have for yourself is intrinsically tied to your level of self-love and self-worth. Because if you don't love yourself enough and you don't have a level of self-worth to think you're deserving of achieving this success or having this relationship or having this body, 
and you don't have that self-worth, well, yeah, when things get difficult, you're going to give up because you're just giving up on yourself. So unless you've had that level of self-worth and self-love, you are going to give up. And that comes with a lot of healing, uh, forgiving your past, forgiving yourself, um, really having a deep understanding of the traumas that you face in your life and working to be at peace with those so that you can love yourself enough to know that, okay, I understand that situation. And that's how that situation made me believe and think about myself. But now I've forgiven the past. I've forgiven those people and I've forgiven myself and I've moved on from that past trauma and understand that I'm worth these things, this goal that I want to have, this business, this relationship, this level of health, whatever it is. So it's tied to your self-worth, your self-love, and there has to be healing that takes a lot of work. Again, it's a process. A lot of this stuff, it's tied on different levels. So what self-love to me is, is, is it's delayed gratification. It's putting off temporary pleasure for a greater vision and life for yourself for the future and loving yourself enough to put in the work over the long term in order to achieve that because you're worth it and you deserve it and you want it and you're capable of it. And it's all true. And you know this and anything getting in the way of not uh, believing that or um, coming to terms with that truth, because that is the truth. That is your trauma. That is your past belief. That is your pain speaking that's preventing you. So the last way that I would say uh, that we break through this is we develop practices. Uh, we connect daily. This is why having such a powerful vision is so important. Why I sit down and I write and I read and I meditate almost every day, pretty much every day, with the exception uh, of this past week, so I was a little under the weather. So we develop daily practices and make these things that we do on a daily basis, connecting to our vision, the end goal, a daily habit because connecting to that vision daily on a daily basis is going to help you pull through when things are not going your way when you are inevitably faced with the challenges that pop up uh, that are meant to be there that you're supposed to break through in order to mold you into the person you want to be to have this final vision that's what it's about my friends so it's daily motivation and the last thing it's important to have the right people around you uh, you may, if you're fortunate enough to have even just one person who really supports your goals, man, you can talk to them on a regular basis, consider yourself blessed, but most of you, me included, will not have many people that understand or care or believe in your vision, and that's okay. So you've got to have the right people around you, and if you don't, it's better to rock alone than it is to rock with people who don't have your back, because that is an energy drain. So this is where, again, self-love comes into play. You learn to become your biggest supporter. So the one of my favorite quotes, this always pops up for me, and I always thought this was cool the first time I heard it. It's from Zig Ziglar an old school personal development coach. And uh, his quote is, or what he said was, people, of, people often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. That's from Zig Ziglar. So you're not gonna be motivated every day. Uh, it's gonna get tough, it's supposed to. But if you make it a daily habit and a daily practice to connect with your vision and consistently clear out all the crap and the negative beliefs, every single day just like bathing you will remain fixed and focused on your vision and you will develop more and more belief in yourself and a system of clearing out anything that blocks you as far as negative energy thoughts beliefs go preventing you from moving forward when things get tough on the way to creating this grand vision you have for your life because you really are worth it and i mean that and you know that too so we got you, I got you, you got you, and if you're lucky, be grateful for the people in your life that got you that really want you to succeed. Um, you know, soon enough, I am in, I'm still in this transition in my life. Finally, within the next like couple of weeks here, I'll be able to settle down uh, in my new apartment, which I'm really stoked about, and get into my new routine, and really be able to set some roots down and, and create a home base for me and my little, my little boy, my little doggy man. Um, my little dog and I'll get in a consistent routine all that to be said um, I will create a community for you for me for us in which you have a positive environment to go uh, to and a place to be with other positive influences with other people who are of like mind in which we are all building together um, 
So when the time's right, you know, I'll set up a free Discord for us and some cool stuff where we can all gather, uh, maybe get together and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out and flesh that out once I sit down. But nonetheless, hopefully this helped today. So if you have trouble seeing things through, identify and understand what's going on, let's make sure you're around the right people and develop some daily practices and understand that that's part of the journey. Each one of these challenges are meant to mold us to support us into becoming the people that we are becoming uh, that have that life that do the things we want to do and who are those better versions of ourselves that's who we're becoming so that's what i got for you guys today i love you so much and i will see you soon for another video peace